Hello and welcome back. Now that we are learning streaming, it is also an opportunity for us to learn the basics about Kafka. Today, we will learn some basics about Kafka. We will see what is the purpose of architecture that Kafka follows. Now, Kafka is a popular open source distributed streaming service. It is also used as a messaging queue. It was initially built by LinkedIn and later handed over to Apache for open source. Let's go ahead and understand some of the popular terminology and how Kafka works. Now, when we talk about Kafka, the popularity of Kafka came with PubSub architecture. It means publisher and subscriber architecture. Kafka is one of the most popular open source distributed streaming event service. Now, you can also consider Kafka as a messaging queue. So, when we talk about messaging queue, understand it like this. We will have one publisher, we will publish some messages and we will have some subscribers who will subscribe to this message to consume it. So, in Kafka terminology, the one who produces the messages is known as a producer and the one who consumes a message is called a consumer. Now, a message can only be published for a particular topic. So, consider in our real life scenario, you subscribe to a newsletter. Now, the newsletter can be of a technology, this newsletter can be of a healthy lifestyle. So, here the topic is the healthy lifestyle or the technology. And you are the subscriber who will subscribe to that newsletter. Similarly, in Kafka terminology, we will have one topic in which the producers will produce some message. And the consumer will subscribe to that topic in order to consume those messages. Now, we know that Kafka is a distributed service. It means it works in a cluster fashion. Now, in a cluster, we can have more than one servers or more than one nodes connected. In Kafka terminology, the servers or nodes are known as brokers and we need a manager who would maintain the metadata for these brokers and that manager is Jukeeper. Now, consider we have a producer who produces some messages and these messages would be posted to these brokers and the consumer will connect to these brokers in order to consume the messages. Now, these brokers are also known as one more term which is bootstrap server. The bootstrap server is nothing but a list of brokers that are available. And one more point to note is, these brokers also maintain some of the metadata like topic among themselves. So, a producer or consumer can connect to any of the bootstrap server in order to publish or consume messages. Now, in distributed computing, we know that we prefer horizontal scaling rather than vertical scaling. It means, in horizontal scaling, we can add more number of brokers as and when we need in a Kafka cluster. And this will ensure zero downtime for a Kafka cluster. Okay, now that we understand how a Kafka cluster works, let's go ahead and see how Kafka attains its distributed nature. Now, in Kafka, a topic is distributed in form of partitions. Now, consider we have a topic and we distributed this topic in three partitions, that is 0, 1 and 2. You can see this yellow as the partition. And as and when we put messages, those messages get into the topic in FIFO format, what we called as first in, first out. And this FIFO ensures the message are in sequence as they are posted. So consider we have some messages, for example, M and A. Now, in order to process this message, Kafka has the key of the message and places it in one of the partition. For example, consider it has placed the M in the first partition and A in the fourth partition. Now, consumer has to subscribe to that topic and thus it can read these messages in parallel fashion from different partitions. So, the consumer can read the message M and A in parallel from both the partitions. And thus, we have the benefit of distributed computing here. Now, in order to make sure that the consumer don't loses, the offset means the message number which it has already read, the offset is maintained at the zookeeper. Again, we can have more than one consumer subscribing for the same topic. There is no limit to it. Thus, you can have one publisher who publishes a message and you can have multiple subscribers who can subscribe to the same message. And this is how Kafka processes message in complete distributed fashion. Now, in order to maintain fault tolerance for Kafka, Kafka provides you with an option called replication factor. So, the benefit of this replication factor is the same message will be created in multiple brokers and out of which one would be the leader and other would be the follower. So, considering our Kafka cluster, consider our message M has been put in all three. So, the replication factor here is three, out of which one of the broker would be leader and other two would be follower. Similarly, if you have the other message A, the A would be placed on all three if you have a replication factor of three. Out of this, one would be leader 
and other two would be follower. Now, the leader is responsible for read and write and the followers are just keeping the replication of that message. In case the leader is not available, the other follower would be made leader and he will then read and write for that particular message. And this is how Kafka works. Now, if you are confused, don't worry. We are going to see all of this in example right now. Okay, in order to demonstrate how Kafka works, I have created a Kafka cluster with three brokers. You can see Kafka 1.1, Kafka 2.1 and Kafka 3.1. And I have Zookeeper which is used to maintain the metadata for all these three Kafka brokers. Now, if you also want to follow along, you can go ahead to my Git repository which is github.shubhamkharwal. You can go to Docker images and you can download this Kafka cluster folder. Inside this folder, you will find a Docker Compose YAML file. You just need to download this file. And in the location where you have downloaded the file, open a command prompt and type docker compose up. Once you do that, in few minutes, you will have a Kafka cluster like this in your docker up and running. Now, this Kafka cluster is just to show you how Kafka works. In our Spark streaming example, we will use a Kafka cluster with one broker and Jukeeper. Now, if you want to play along with your Kafka cluster, you can do it with this cluster. Now, we know that we can use any of the broker as a bootstrap server. Let's go ahead and connect to one of the broker. In order to do that, I'll open my command prompt. So I'll connect to CF Kafka 1.1. So I'll copy the ID of that container. I'll go to my command prompt and I'll type docker exec minus it and I'll paste that container ID and I'll open bin slash bash and I hit enter. Okay, now we are connected to that particular broker. Now, we know that in order to publish or subscribe, we first need a topic. So, you can type Kafka hyphen topics. And in order to list the topic, we need to type list. And we need to provide the bootstrap server. So, for that, I'll type bootstrap server. And as we are already connected to one of the broker, we'll just type localhost. And we'll put the port as 29092. I'll hit enter. As you can see, it listed down the topics that are available. Let's go ahead and create our first topic. So, in order to do that, I'll just click the up arrow key. Now, in place of list, I'll type create and I'll give the topic name. So, I'll write topic and the name of the topic to test topic and I'll hit enter. Awesome. Our topic is created. Let's go ahead and see the information about this topic. To do that, I'll just go ahead and change the create to describe. Nice. You can see since we have not specified any partition number or replication factor, this test topic has only one partition and it has only single replication factor. And thus the leader for that partition is the broker number three. And since our replication factor is only one, so any message that will be put will have only one copy. And again, that will be available on the same leader node because that leader would be responsible for reading and writing of that partition. Okay, let's go ahead and create one more topic with more number of partition and more replication factor. So what I'll do is I'll again go to that same create command and now I'll create a topic called topic one. And this time I'll put partitions as three. I'll create three partitions for this topic. And again, I'll put replication factor as two. And I'll hit enter. Great, our topic is created. Again, let's go ahead and see the information for this topic. So I'll open the describe command and I'll change the topic to topic one and I'll hit enter. Nice. Now you see more information. For the same topic, three partitions are created. And if you notice, for each of the partition, there is a different leader node. So for partition zero, the third broker is the leader. Similarly, for partition one, the first broker is the leader. And for partition two, the second broker is the leader. Again, since we have the replication factor as two, the messages will be replicated to third and first broker for partition zero, one and two for partition one, and two and three for partition two. Out of which you can see the third is the leader. It means the third broker is responsible for read and write, and we only have one backup copy at the broker number one. Similarly, for other two partitions as well. Awesome. Now that we understand how the partitions are done, let's go ahead and see the offsets for each of the partition. Now, in order to get the offset, I'll type Kafka get offsets and we need to provide the topic name and the bootstrap server. So I can just copy this from the top here and I can paste it here and I'll hit enter. 
Now you can see for each of the topic, the first one is the partition number and the second one is the offset. Since we don't have any message, the offset is currently set to zero for all of them. Let's go ahead and publish some of the messages. So to do that, we have to use Kafka console producer and we have to provide a topic and bootstrap server. So again, I'll copy this from the top and I'll paste it here. I'll hit enter. We got into a terminal in order to post message. Let me put some messages. For example, I'll write first message as Spark Streaming. The second message as Kafka is awesome. Now, since I've posted both of them, I'll press Ctrl C and exit from it. Nice. Let's go ahead and check the offsets again. So I'll just go to the previous command, which is Kafka get offsets, and I'll hit enter. Nice. Now you can see one of the message got pushed into partition 0 and one of the message got pushed into the partition 1. We still don't have any messages in the partition 2. Let me go ahead and open one more command prompt for consumer. For that, I'll just open one more command prompt and I'll copy the same command that we used to connect to this Docker container and I'll paste it here. Now, in order to open a consumer and subscribe to a topic, we can write Kafka console consumer and we need to provide the topic name and bootstrap server so let me go ahead and copy the topic name from here and bootstrap server as well so i'll go ahead and put it here let me hit enter now you cannot see anything printing here the reason is it is waiting for new messages it is not consuming the old messages now if you want to consume the old messages you just need to provide the offset and to do that you need a partition as well so let's provide a partition first so for example, we want to consume the partition zero data and the offset from which we want to consume. So we will consume from the very first offset. So we'll type earliest. And as soon as I hit enter, see the message that was pushed in the partition zero. Kafka is awesome. Now, if you want to see the same for partition one, we just need to exit and we just need to go and change it to partition one and hit enter. You can see the Spark streaming message here, right? Now, we are reading it by partition by partition. What if we want to read any message that comes to this topic? So let's exit this and we remove this offset and partition. So now we are pointing to this topic. Let's hit enter. And now this consumer is waiting for new messages. Let's go ahead and post some messages here. So to do that, I'll just minimize this one and I'll run that same command to post the messages. So I'll run this Kafka console producer command and I'll hit enter. It will open me a console to type message. I'll type this is third message and I'll hit enter. As soon as I hit enter, you can see the consumer reading those messages, right? So let me put one message, for example, Apple. You can see those messages here. I can type lion. Now this consumer is reading the whole topic for the messages, right? Again, now we can again check the offset. So let me remove this and let me get the offset. So I'll run this get offset command again. I'll hit enter. Nice. You can see the offsets being changing here. So these offsets are very important in order to manage the message that you want to read. And these offsets are being used by the consumers in order to manage the message they are reading. Right. So again, if you want to read to a particular partition, we know that we can read for a particular partition. Again, you can read for a particular offset. For example, you want to read from offset one. You need to put one and you need to hit enter. Any message that is from the first offset will be produced here. And this is why this offset becomes so important while consuming messages. And I believe you got the feel of Kafka today. We have covered a lot of basics about Kafka, which is necessary for this Spark streaming course. You won't be needing any more thing for this Spark streaming course. Now, if you want to learn more about Kafka, there are many resources in internet that you can follow. But this video is more than sufficient in order to get you started with Apache Kafka. For our Spark streaming course, we are not going to use this cluster. We will have a simple Spark cluster with one broker and one zookeeper. And that should be sufficient in order to show you how Spark works with Kafka. And in our next video, we will start implementing the same. Till then, keep learning, keep growing, keep sharing.